Ark Knights, a tower defense game with a lot of amazing anime looking characters that drop from the sky to fight with other amazing anime looking characters and generic clones that spawn from hell and prevent them from invading heaven. I was introduced to this mobile game by a friend but I was not interested, no thank you, for I am a responsible college student and I already have League of Legends to entertain my gaming experience with great stress. But then, I felt like I was left out in my group of mates because I was the only friend who was not playing this Plants vs Zombies game that has been hit with a japanizing beam. So fuck it. To maintain my keep in this fellowship of culture, I shall download and install this Chinese software. In this video, I'm going to explain what the game is about and tell you my thoughts and opinions. Although, don't take this as some game expert review for I am not. I play games to enjoy and have fun and I am here to share that experience and give you the reasons as to why I'm still playing this game for two years now. This is my story, where I enter a world inhabited by farmers, whales, leviathans, where they worship a deity called Aaron Jesus and gets them excited from opening a bag that increases their dopamine and gives them great pleasure. Or lose their shit, burn their money, pray, cry, and generate salt not even China can mass produce. A world full of hot anime women treating them like chess pieces in a weird chessboard. It's all about strats, sacrifices, big brain moves, adrenaline clutch moments, and decreasing sanity. Welcome to Ark Knights. Ark Knights is a free to play tower defense game, so you don't need to spend any money. <clears throat> Ark Knights is a free to play tower defense gacha game, so you don't need to spend any money to play the game. Alright? Yes, it's a gacha game, and some people have negative preconceptions about it. But let's throw away the gacha for a moment and talk about the game, because that's where it should matter. So, where to start? Fuck. As you enter the game, you are greeted with this menu and be like, What the fuck? This looks like an air cockpit. There's so many buttons. But do not worry. The game will guide you on what you need to know and what to do. Do try and understand on how everything works because you will receive a fuck ton of information at the start of the game. Do not be like me who skipped all of it and afterwards looking it up on Google on how some of this operate. But I will try my best to give you a gist on the contents of this menu and what you need to know. Settings. You know how it works. Caution sign. Notifications. Mail. Where you get free stuff. I can't Calendar, where you get free stuff daily. These are the currency of the game where you mainly use them for characters. Combat, pretty self-explanatory. Operator management. The characters of this game are called operators and this is where you level them up, make them strong and look up more information about them. But most especially... Doctor. <laughs> Squads, where you manage your team composition. Store, where you buy stuff. Recruit, where you get operators in a certain time frame. Headhunt, where you can hear the cries of agony of our fallen brethren. Mission, do certain tasks to get stuff. And thank you Ark Knights Devs for finally putting a collect all button. This makes me come every time I use it. Base. This thing, where you pick a waifu who greets you every time you log in and talks to you. Friends, where you make friends with benefits. Archives, the Ark Knight's lore library. And speaking of lore, before we get into the gameplay, there's a story we must delve into. Yes, more information, bitches. But I'll just give you the synopsis of the story and I'll try not to spoil too much. Our journey begins with you getting isekai in this post-apocalyptic world called Terra where anthropomorphic beings roam the land. Cat girls, dog girls, bears, fish, dragons, crocs, a cockroach, and many many more. You wake up in a coffin and greeted by this lovely lady that has a uh bunny donkey ears and you are a doctor in this world conveniently having amnesia so you can learn more about the world as you progress through the story the world is in ruins because of these red alert level 10 natural disasters called catastrophes that happens very often that's why there are cities that have wheels on them so they can drift away from this bullshit these catastrophes also poop out these things called originum originium orig a mineral that works wonders a source of energy that can power almost about everything and have the ability 
ability to give the people magic powers. But this rock is also like a bomb and causes a deadly disease called oripacy. Anyone who has this disease are called the infected and are looked down upon, abused, mistreated, ridiculed, and spat on by the healthy people. So a band of infected gathered and had a union and started an organization called <laughs> Reunion, created to protect themselves and end this discrimination. So they're the good guys, right? Right? No, because they're actually a bunch of terrorists who seek vengeance to the healthy people and those who oppose them. And it's your job as a doctor slash commander to stop this madness and find a cure to this disease so that the infected will stop growing crystals in their bodies and shatter like some broken glass. So it's time to enter the battlefield. At the start of the game, you will feel like a god because you will be beating these stages really Easy. easily and receive a lot of random rewards making you feel wealthier than the founder of Amazon. But eventually, that power will dissipate as you progress further. You will descend from Mount Olympus to become a peasant working <laughs> or farming your way up from the ground. You have tasted power, now you have to overcome these challenges and grow to attain such strength. The stages become more varied, more enemy spawners, more to defend, and they can be this close. You can place blocks to change the enemy's route. Sometimes stages can give buff to your operators which gives you the advantage of winning but some stages also hinder your strategy. You have tiles you can deploy on, sandstorms that slowly kill everyone, magma tiles, freeze, burn, and protect civilians. I fucking hate you guys. There are different types of enemies from different factions, different classes, different substats with their own unique abilities. To overcome these adversities, first let's talk about what probably attracted most people into the game. There are a lot of characters in this game that are too much to pick for who's going to become your in-game wife. I remember when I started playing the game and the first high rarity operator I got was this beautiful woman named Shining. Doctor. I brought her to every stage, healing this voice with a sword and comforts me with her soothing Seiyu voice. I love her so much I bought her a risque outfit and she looks immaculate. The operators come in different classes, vanguards, basically the pawns, the first who should engage in battle, snipers, bang bang bang, bang bang bang, bang bang bang, medics, heal, casters, chant spells and deal magic damage, guards, yes stronger vanguards in it, defenders, tank and block multiple enemies, supporters, buff allies, debuff and slow enemies, specialists, push, pull, stun, slow, surprise, explode, and one of them kills your allies. Every operator has their own unique abilities, skills, and talents. Some operators cannot be healed but will gain health through spilling blood. Medics can summon shit and this ungodly thing. Defenders that can heal nearby allies. Supporters become better healers than some medics. Traits of immortality reveal the unseen, have godlike skills that kill enemies in an instant, and many more. As you get to understand the concept of the game, it's finally time to know about how the combat works. The gameplay is pretty simple, you have deployment points, these operators cost this much points to deploy them, have a required amount, drop them down, prevent any enemy from going through this blue box, this is the number of enemies you have to defeat, this is your HP, don't let that go to zero and mission complete, you win. Fairly easy, right? Not until the stages become more complex, the number of enemies increase, they become more stronger, more varied, cannot be blocked, cannot be seen, enemies that can only be blocked with operators having 3 block points, exploding spiders, one shot kill bullshit. That's why you need to have a reliable team composition to have an optimum strategy. There are drones in this stage, bring a sniper, we have big boys, bring a defender, tanky enemies but have weak resistance to the dark arts, bring a caster, fast enemies that cannot be blocked, bring a supporter that can impair their movement, you see a hole, get a specialist that can yoink enemies into the abyss. Always bring a vanguard that can generate a lot of deployment points so you can deploy other operators faster. Healers, guards, etc, etc. This to me is where the game starts to get fun. Understanding the game mechanics, always strategizing. Which operators I'm going to use? I'm actually using 100% of my brain. Clearing complicated challenges. I'm becoming a tactical genius. And the difficulty increases as I progress further. To the point where I encounter stages that seem impossible to beat. Again. 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 Never have I been so tilted in a tower defense game. I'm losing my sanity here. Literally. Come back later, do it again. Okay, maybe it's not my strat that's the problem, but my operators are probably a bit weak. Time to make them strong. Grr. 
When you're at the earlier stage of the game, sooner or later you will realize that there will be a point where stages inhibit you from advancing because your operators aren't strong enough. So better pick up that hoe because we'll be doing a lot of farming. Grinding for resources is very important so you can make your cute operator deal big damage and this is the part of the game where you're going to spend most of your time doing. And personally, it's not really fun. It's fun when you're clearing the stage for the first time but if you're going to keep on doing the stages over and over and over again until you acquire enough resources to level up your operator- Oh! Not enough resources. Better get some more- Oh! All out of sanity. <laughs> Yes, pretty fucking boring gameplay. And eventually, you'll want to optimize in using your sanity, especially in getting a specific material. So go on to Google, research, look at fucking tables and spreadsheets on which stages has the best drop rate for a certain material, then farm that stage. You don't always have to keep on playing the same stage over and over again. Leave it to the AI to do the work so you can save yourself from actually going insane. You can always leave the game to play by itself and do something else. Work, do something productive, or watch your favorite podcast. And once you've made your operator have the ability to kill a god, it's time to go back to the stage where I failed so many times and finally seek retribution. Help me sexy voice Italian man, I need guidance. Cage it, but wait up. Okay now. Wow. Oh my god, it's finally over. The character I borrowed from a friend is pretty good. I want her. Welcome to the land of salt and screaming markets where wishes does not come true. People getting unlucky and throwing money to get the chance of getting some SSRP and G anime girl. I've never really understood the appeal of this kind of system in gacha games, and why pay money for roles when you can farm for those at the weekly arundum stage, do the mission, and earn from events. I remember getting my first shiny golden bag with rainbows. Didn't know what that portrayed, I didn't even know if I got good characters. She good? She good? He good? Oh, another one. She cute? She good? I didn't know most of what I was getting when I started the game, until I went in deep. Operators are ranked through stars. The more stars means the stronger they are and what they can contribute in combat. But it doesn't always mean that one is better than the other. Remember, this is a strategy game. Everyone is special. You don't need a 6 star to beat the game and they're difficult to attain anyways. These are called banners. This is where you roll for operators and whatever operators you see on those banners are the ones most likely you'll get. But if you want a particular operator, well good fucking luck. As I sink more time into playing this game and understanding the value of these operators, I have been enlightened. Forget what I said about not needing a 6 star because getting the SSR waifu I want is euphoric. I've never felt this excited and elated over some anime PNG Doctor. until I start to get unlucky. The taste of salt is different from this realm because I can only taste pain. And this was the point where I started to consider spending money, which is a bad sign. I'm free to play. I'm not saying this just to spite the whales, it's not much of a choice because it's the only option that I have. I don't have that much money, but that does not excuse me from almost being addicted into waifu gambling. You see videos and articles about people spending hundreds and thousands of dollars into these gacha games. Seeing this was preposterous. Why waste your money on something intangible? Until I experienced it myself. I didn't spend any money on this game, but I think I understand as to why people do. May it be through buying monthly packs to have more advantage than the average free-to-play gamer, or just straight up buy more originums just to get that anime puss. Dog. 
The desire of acquiring the character you want is pretty dangerous, especially when you don't have self-control. It was tempting to spend what savings that I have just to get the operator that I want, the ecstasy of obtaining the waifu of my dreams. Wakey wakey! Thinking how much fun I will have playing the new character. It's an overstatement to say that I have comprehended the mind of a whale when I haven't experienced spending an amount of money into the game. Yet. I wasn't really hooked when I saw this game because I thought it was just anime Plants vs Zombies. Not hating on the game, I did enjoy Plants vs Zombies when I was a kid. But when I gave Art Knights a shot, Oh, this ain't anime Plants vs Zombies. Because this game will take a part of you that you will never, ever take. This game should be played in moderation. It's not much of a choice actually, but when you do complete all of the current content of the game, sad to say, you better wait for events and new chapters. All you can do now is to farm for materials and in-game currencies, which I find boring and tedious. And I can understand why people quit at this point, but I can wait. I don't mind the grind because during this time, I just let the game play in the background while doing something else, having the time to beef up some operators ready to beat up a new boss and saving a lot of randoms to guarantee myself a new limited 6-star waifu. As much as getting a 6 star unit, you'll be getting one immediately at the start of the game and get some more eventually. You can also get them from recruitment but it's very very rare to have a top operator tag pop up. As much as I like collecting waifu PNGs like Pokemon, gotta catch them all, it's only a short moment of excitement, pleasure, and fun I get from rolling someone I like or want. It's also a fun banter among us friends throwing salt at each other for one of us not having the new character. But the reasons as to why I'm still playing this anime tower defense game is the combat. The challenge of clearing every stage keeps me coming back for more, especially when there's an event, particularly this one, because you can make the difficulty of the stage more challenging. I know, very fun. The game always adds something new, which is why I felt like the combat doesn't go stale. Yeah, they might have ripped off some elements from other games, but I just don't give a shit. If it works and makes things challenging for me, I'm going to play it and have fun. Also, one of the reasons that keeps me coming back is the story. I'm not into reading because I find it tedious and it feels like I'm studying for my finals. That's why I can't get into books, light novels, visual novels, anything that has vastly amounts of words in them, but I grew to like the story here. The earlier chapters were kinda... But this particular chapter is where it starts to get interesting because I got more in-depth in the situation I'm in as a doctor. Sympathy towards the enemies, why they are the antagonists, knowing more about the characters I work with, the constant mystery around the world, but most especially the character I'm playing. What is the truth behind the mask? The deeds and actions from the past? The people from faint memory? And who was this doctor before amnesia? I am looking forward on how the story progresses. And they also announced an anime adaptation. I genuinely enjoy playing Ark Knights. Never have I been this invested over a tower defense game. I have been playing it for two years now, every day and every night, as a casual time sink. The combat is very fun, overcoming the challenges increases my low IQ, although it does suck to wait for a month or two for something new. I am patient, but how long will this game test my patience before I start to consider leaving? Who knows, I might keep playing it until everything ends. The character designs are very good because it's very anime and I like anime, especially when they're in swimsuits. I like reading the story because I want to know which best girl is going to win. Especially appreciating their lore because context makes the waifus more waifu. The gacha system can be pretty cool, but no matter how much limited chicks you tempt me with, I will not spend a dime for I am poor. That's not something to be proud about, but it does help me have self-restraint. And this has been my normal experience in Arknights.